Ephesians 4, from 7 to 12. And then Luke 16, from 19 to 31. Ephesians is already here. Is already here in the projection. Uh, a few days ago, I was approached. I was uh, at the door of the church. I spoke with the sisters for a few minutes about this this topic. And the Lord, the Holy Spirit made me remember something that happened 15, 20 years ago. It was preached by the pastor, Pedro Adorges. I think I'm going to need a different microphone. And it says the following. But each to of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now he's, uh, he ascended. What does it mean? But that he al also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And uh, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saint for the work of ministry. A ministry for the edif edifying of the body of Christ. Now we're going to go to Luke 16, 19, 31. Now we're going to speak about Lazarus. You know the name of uh, Lazarus. The meaning of Lazarus means the Lord uh, help, the one who is helped. And the Bible speaks about two Lazarus. This Lazarus that we're going to speak about here is the other one that was mentioned a couple of days ago, which was the brother of Martha and Mary. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and uh, fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at, this, at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father, Abraham, have mercy on me. And said Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am uh, tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that I in your lifetime received your good things. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comfort, comforted, comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there 
pass to us. And there in this place, when the rich was in torment, he saw Abraham and Lazarus, depending on translation. And the rich pleading said, Abraham said, have mercy on me, and asked Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger and refresh my tongue because I'm tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, son, remember that um, and you receive lifetime you received your goods, the good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from this pass to, you, to us. Then he said, I beg you, therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers that he may testify to them. Let they also come to this pl place of uh, torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if no and if one goes to them from the dead, they will repeat, repent. But he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. The, text, the previous text say going to uh, skies went to captivity and gave gift to them to men but so before Jesus died there was a place I mentioned called Hades on sale and this place is subdivided into two parts it's called captivity but the parts are, were not divided in this way part A part B but they were divided in the following way. Abraham and Lazarus here. And the other part, the part that was at the bottom, was the part where it's known as the part of torment where the rich man was. So we can say, hey, the rich is in a very difficult situation. And in Revelation chapter 2, the seventh letter that we're going to study in a, in a while in the Sunday school. There's a part that says the following, rich, I am rich, and I lack nothing. So then the Lord given an, gives an advice to the rich, a man that, that thinks he is rich and don't need anything. Uh, I advise you that you may buy gold, burn on fire, so, dress so you can dress yourself and eye drops for your eyes so there are five things I forgot I forgot the one because you are a poor man miserable and blind it is another word that I forgot but it is there in Revelation 2 a letter of Lord said and naked yes so the rich is not a person that has riches but the rich can also go to heaven. And I will show you if you read about Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a rich man. But he went to heaven. He's in eternity with God. Why? Because he accepted Jesus in his house. Jesus made an invitation. It's pleasing to me to rest in your house. Zacchaeus received what was good, received with joy. 
So he accepted Jesus with joy in his house, in his home, in his family. So Zacchaeus was a rich man who is in the eternity of God. So the rich here is a person who thinks that they don't need anything. They think that they have everything. Remember the young man, who rich young man? He approached God, Jesus and said, I obey my parents, I do this and that. And then Jesus said, sell everything and give to the poor. But he chose the riches. So the rich person is the one that thinks it, it's, it's better to keep the other things than to choose the kingdom of God. And the advice of the Lord is to seek the kingdom of God firstly, and the, all the other things will be added on to you. You will be welcome. Because the Bible says that the riches of the Lord does not add pain, torment. So my brethren, I'm going to ask you one thing. What is the name of the beggar? Lazarus. Lazarus is the one the Lord helps and rescues. My rescue comes from the Lord, right? Rescue comes speaks of deliverance or salvation. So my salvation comes from, from the Lord, not through works, so that anyone may gl glorify himself, but it is through faith. So the beggar had a name called Lazarus. And what is the name of the rich man? What is the name of the rich man? Rich, there is no identity. There is no identification. You know why? Because it will only be reached, written in the book of life those who are saved. Lazarus was saved. His name was written in the book of life. The rich man was not. So his name is not written there. Zacchaeus is saved is, is rich, but his name is in the book of life. So Lazarus He died. And what happened at the moment in which Lazarus died? I said three times. He was taken by the angels to the bosom of Abraham. He went to the same place, Addis or Seol. If it's not written this way, it's with letter L. Uh, I'm from the countryside, so I know how to, I don't know how to spell. <laughs> but they both came from from the same place. But Hades and Co. Has, it's like captivity. Had two sides: a good side, where Abraham was, and a place of comfort, refreshing, relief, peace in another place, which was a lower, called place of torment. The Bible says, my brethren, that, that the rich is here like I am, in the lower part. He rose his eyes. That's what I'm saying, is is upwards. The, path to salvation is higher because the place for the damned is lower. So when he, the rich man looked up, he was able to contemplate Abraham and Lazarus and he was able to identify who was there. And he, hey, that one is Abraham and that one is Lazarus. And he had a, a dialogue not with Lazarus, he had a dialogue with Abraham. And it comes to Abraham and said, Have mercy, have mercy, Father Abraham. Abraham was not able to save even himself. It's not worth asking for Abraham, Paul, Silas, or anyone else because. There's no one that we can ask that will save us. And another thing, 
My salvation is while I'm alive. I have to resolve this at this exact moment. Because if I pass from this to the better place, there is no uh, uh, agreement anymore. Uh, it's worthless to lit up candles and pray for the dead because the resources are over. The only responsible for my salvation is is not God, is not the church, is not the pastor, is not my father or mother. The only responsible for my salvation is me. I am the only one who will give account of myself when the day I uh, present myself before the Lord. No one else. That's why the Apostle Paul said there's no uh, uh, the translator is agony because I'm speaking very fast. <laughs> it will separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Oh Lord. Forgive me, translator. <laughs> So let's go. He asked for mercy. There's no mercy. After death, there is no mercy. So he says the following. Send Lazarus. Ask Lazarus to dip uh, the tip of his finger on water. And come here, refresh, refresh my tongue. He didn't ask for refreshing on any other part of his body. He asked for refreshing on his tongue. Our friend, our brother, let me find you here. James. Uh, uh, to James says the following. James 3, verse 3. They put a uh, brake on the mouth of the horses so that we can guide the entire body. James 6. James 6. The tongue is they contaminate the entire body and inflame the course of nature. It's inflamed by um, hell. In Matthew 12. Matthew 12. 36. 36 and 37. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Amen. Matthew 31, no, 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 31, 32. Therefore I say to you, every, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven, but forgiven him, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, will, it will not be forgiven him either in this age or in the age to come. So what he said was to blaspheme. Blaspheme the, against the name of the Lord. That's why he asked to put, put uh, water on the tip of the finger of Lazarus and to, to bring refreshment to his tongue. He wanted the, his blasphemy to vanish. 
the sin that he had committed and he used his mouth to do this to stop existing. With our mouth, we can uh, have two destinations for our soul, eternal salvation or eternal damnation. And Solomon says, if you confess with your mouth and, you, and with your heart you believe, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ died and resurrected from the dead, you will be, you will be saved. So, another teaching for us this morning. Be careful with what I'm saying. You'll be judged. I will be judged by my own words. When Jesus, he performed a miracle, the Pharisees said the following. He spells the demons by the power of the Bezebo. And in this sense that the Lord gives answer to this thing, he speaks of the blasphemy of the Pharisees. There were two criminals and the cross that were beside Jesus. One of the criminals, he begins to blas say blasphemies against Jesus, and the other criminal reproached him. You see the mouth, what you can do with your mouth. One was there on the cross being crucified. He said blasphemies against Jesus and the other reproached saying the following. Are you not afraid you being in the same condemnation? So he comes to Jesus and says the following. Remember me. We by our own doings, we deserve to be here. If your mouth, you confess, so he confessed with his own mouth. I'm here being killed by my own crimes. He confessed and he was a criminal. Yeah, he was a sinner. He has transgressed, transgressed against God. So he said, we deserve to be here, but this one has done no evil. Isn't it how it's written? And he comes to Jesus and says, and he uses his mouth. He says, Jesus, remember me. Or in other words, have mercy on me. And it says, when you enter into your kingdom, because he knew that the kingdom of Jesus was not of this world. And he didn't want it to be. I want to go to your kingdom. When, I, when you enter into your kingdom, remember me. And Jesus comes to this man and says, still today you will be with me in paradise. And in, well, in a few minutes, we're going to speak about the paradise. So now, let's go back to Hades. So in order for the brethren to understand, before Jesus died, there, was a pla there is a place called Hades, Oseo, which is the same thing. And there, it's subdivided into two parts, the top part and the bottom part. I spoke about the rich, where he was. Lazarus was killed, was, uh, he died and he was carried by the angels. And the rich uh, remained without any identification, he was buried. Who carried the rich? I don't know. Where the rich ended up? The angel of God take him to God. And where did he go? To the bottom part. How is this place where he is? Place of torment, affliction. He speaks of the fire where he was being consumed by the fire. The place of our brother Lazarus. We're going to meet him one of these days. Glory to God. It was a place of peace, consolation, refreshing, and relief. It says, Father Abraham. Jesus said, God can, even from a stone, He can bring up children of Abraham. When Jesus speaks to Abraham, see this, God speaks to Abraham, see the stars in the sky and the sand on the ground. 
on the earth. In the same way, your descendants are going to, to be. And the Bible says that Abraham believed. So the children of Abraham that go to return are the ones who believe. Because salvation is through the grace, through faith. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. Whoever believes will be saved. Who doesn't believe is already condemned. So the children of faith of Abraham that had the same faith. It's not the children of their genealogy, of physical genealogy, of biological blood. But it's because of the faith that was generated in the heart of Abraham that it was the deposited in him, in me, and each and one of us through the Holy Spirit of God. Those are the children of, the true children of Abraham. So he said, Abraham, Father Abraham, and Father Abraham was not able to do anything because whoever saves is not the Father. Who saves is the Son. God sent Jesus and the love of God that sent Jesus in order for us to be saved by Jesus. You know that, right? That Jesus loved the, the words in such a way that He sent His only begotten Son so to, to whoever believes Him may not perish but have eternal life. God does not save. Who saves is Jesus. But God sent Jesus in order to save men. That's why He says the following. Come to me. How is the text? Whoever does not come to me will never be saved. My Father and I, we are one. So salvation is of God through His Son Jesus. And that rescues man because who dies is Jesus. So in that time, before Jesus, there are more details, but we cannot waste too much time. But at that time, before Jesus died, there were these two places, the higher place and lower place. The rich wanted to, uh, that uh, a dad would come back to earth to speak with the living. I, I, there are some, uh, th some thoughts and some ideas that say that uh, the dad comes back. But if you die, you're dead. The dead never come back. When my father died, they came with a story that my father wanted to speak with me. And I said, okay, let's go. And I went there. I want to see what the story And a bunch of people uh, gathered and they lit up a candle. They sat in the matchbox and then the candle was blown and they, he write, wrote down something and signed at the bottom and said, this is a message from my father. This is his signature. And I said, oh, that's not his signature. <laughs> and they got angry at me and they never called me back. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> you know? So if you're dead, you die. There's no solution for it. Nobody comes from there to here. But we are going there. You have to choose in what side of Hades you want to be. So the story of the dead coming back, it doesn't exist. We have a, a shepherd, we have a Lord, we have a God that takes care of our lives. So do not enter into this uh, foolishness. This is a, a boat with a hole. <laughs> so they wanted to send a dead, but it, it doesn't exist. But when Jesus died, in First Ephesians it says that he brought captive to the captive. So when Jesus dies, he comes down to this place called Hades, or sell. And he come to this captivity where uh, to this place where is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, all those people that were saved throughout of history. 
all of those were, that were justified by faith and they used here the blood because without shedding of blood there is no remission of sin but Apostle Paul he says that it is impossible he says he used the word impossible that the blood of uh, bulls and, and goats may justify man and the before God or bring man to the presence of a God so the blood of those animals was just a symbol of what of the one who was going to come so that in his blood would redeem man and send man to eternity of God so before Jesus died people they have been justified through the blood and faith they stayed in this place where Abraham is, was there with Lazarus. So when Jesus dies, he comes down, he rescues and he takes this people that was here, that was waiting, the justification of the blood of Jesus to the eternity, to the paradise. They were taking there. That's why when the, the criminal at the cross, when he says, remember me when you enter into your kingdom, and Jesus said, to this, still today, Jesus died at 3 o'clock of the afternoon, the time of the, sac the afternoon sacrifice. At 6 o'clock of the afternoon, the Jewish didn't want the, bury, the bodies to be hanging there because it was the the day before the Passover so then they asked uh, to go there the soldiers to go there and break the bones of the the man there so to finish uh, killing them so that they could be removed from there so then they went there Jesus was already dead but the two criminals the Bible says that it doesn't mention so probably at 6 o'clock of the afternoon was the time in which the good and the bad criminal, they both were killed. And Jesus says, to, still today you're going to be with me in heaven. He didn't, didn't say that you're going to be with me in uh, Hades. You're going to be me, with me in paradise. So when the criminal goes after Jesus, it goes straight to, to paradise of God. So if today I die, I'm not going to go to Hades with Abraham. I'm going to be in paradise, in the paradise of God. And those who die today and have not accepted Jesus, they will remain this other place, the place of torment, waiting for the day of the final judgment. Chapter 22, 21 of Revelation that speaks about this, the great white throne. And they opened the book. And who was not found in the book of life? The Bible says that it was the death, the death of hell. Hell gave them the sea, and hell gave their dead. So the ones that were not written in the book of life were thrown to the lake of fire, which is the second death. So they resurrect in order to receive the eternal condemnation. So those who accepted Jesus, they resurrect to eternal life. So Apostle John, he speaks of this. In the book of Revelation, he speaks of this. He speaks of paradise. Where is the paradise? Paradise is a, a third heaven. The second first, everybody knows, is the one that we see when we when walk outside of the church. And the second is the universe. And the third heaven, no one knows where it is. Uh, except Paul that was there, and he's already there. The Bible said that he was raptured and, and, uh, in his own body, and he went to the third heaven and saw things that were not good for me to mention. And... Uh, John and Island of Patmos, he had the same experience. Come here and I will show you in chapter 3 and I will show what is up 
ought to happen. And at the end of chapter 21, he said, I, John saw a new heaven and a new earth because the first and second earth passed and the sea no longer exists. And speaks of the holy city, the new Jerusalem. And the letters, the first letter to Ephesians, the, the letter of Ephesians, he says, to one who is victorious, I will give to eat of the tree of life which is in the middle of the paradise of God. I mean, John sees the new Jerusalem, he sees a river, and the river had a tree that was from one to the other side, which is the tree of life. So he speaks of a place where the saved are going to go. They are going to the paradise of God. So we see here two destinations for my soul. If I accepted Jesus in my life and I walked according to his teachings, I will go today to the paradise of God. This place doesn't exist anymore. You brought the captive to uh, his uh, arrest place, and he was brought to the place of torment. The, the ones that were not saved, and one day will be led to another place which is a little worse, even worse, it's really bad, which is the lake of fire and sulfur, which is the second death. So, in the arrival of Jesus, the, the second coming of Jesus, those who, with, are with the Lord and all tongues, nations, these people, they are going to resurrect with Christ. Jesus is not going to come to the earth. He is going to come on the clouds and stay there in the clouds. And the ones who died in Christ, they will resurrect first. They will receive a new body. There is a song that speaks about that. They receive a new body. And if we are still li alive in Jesus, our bodies are going to be transformed and turned into a new body. And then we will live forever with God. So the opportunity that we have is this, is now. If you hear today my voice, do not harden your heart. So the broad brethren understood. Before there was a Hades, and the Hades there were two places. The good place was Jesus took everyone that was there to the paradise. And the other group, which is not ours, remained in this place, in the lower part. There is no point in interceding for the dead. There is no point in. Mm. There is no resource. So, my brethren, sometimes a few people in our midst that have already been in our midst, uh, maybe a family member, a neighbor, a relative, sometimes these people die. And we think, hey, why does, did this person go? Sometimes we cry because we think that this person went to this place here, the bad place, Hades of torment. But God surprises us. I imagine, you know, the brother can imagine. <coughs> the true criminals, two criminals in the cross, if you just looked at them from afar, you didn't hear their dialogue, what would be your judgment uh, about those two criminals? Uh, for sure, the majority, 90%, would say, well, they were both, went both to hell. But another, a third person, they're the ones that are good. It's not Luciano who is bad, but they're the good ones. The good would say, hey, they were crucified with Jesus. Maybe they had a good, op a great opportunity. I don't think that neither of them are stupid. They had nothing to lose. They went both to heaven. But then we find out that one 
blasphemed and and the other asked for mercy and this one went to heaven. So ten years ago I was in a community an association of uh, land and uh, we had a little work of evangelization. We built a church there and I preached a message in that church. I don't remember the message and a few years, five years passed by and during this period of five, six years the Lord had mercy on me and I was anointed and then I was ordained pastor and the first baptisms that happened and I was present as a pastor to participate. They were baptized in my city, almost 160 people. And we were baptizing, 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 and it came an individual. When he came down to the water, he said, I wanted to be baptized by that man. And I said, okay. But I thought, well, why does this man, I don't even know who he is want me to baptize me? I'm going to ask if the Lord gave him some spiritual gift. I don't know. Why? When he approached me and I asked him, I asked him, what is your name? And he said, oh, don't you remember me? And I said, I'm sorry, I don't remember. <laughs> and I'm, I'm a person such and such. And he said, amen. But why did you ask me to baptize you? And he said, no, a while ago. I had drank um, a couple of glasses and uh, somebody invited me to go to the church. And there you said something in the middle of the service. And that thing that you asked me, the word that you gave me remained inside of my heart. At the moment I didn't agree with anything. I thought that everything was wrong. And I went home and continued. I go went back to drink more. But a, a time passed by, and I entered into a, a trial and a problem. In the middle of my problem, I remember my, uh, I remember what you had said, and I said, "I'm going to go to that church where that man preached that thing uh, a while ago, so that to see if this thing is really true." He challenged me. So when he went to the church, he had an experience with the Lord, and he was saved. And was on this day, he went. He revealed this to me on the baptism. In Brazil, uh, we have an experience of a, 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 a tribe. The first tribe was evangelized uh, by Maranatha, and there I have a, a friend that knows him. And there's a pastor called Epiphany. He was the first Indian from Brazil to be a pastor, a Maranatha pastor. He's from the tribe Patasha. And there they sing uh, songs in Pachohan, the, their tongue. Perasha tu pai peano, perasha tu pai peano. The life, the life is Jesus. And this man, and other men from this community, there's a man called the one that has uh, machete. I don't remember his name. This man, when he drank, he he put everything in disarray in the tribe. When he he drank and he had a machete, he, this was the worst man. And this man is going to go hell. <laughs> there is no solution for him. In our church, that was that began to be constructed. He went there saying that. We, we're not going to construct any church. There is no church here. I am the one who gives the orders here. This man had an experience, a deep experience with the Lord. Today, he's an usher in our church. He continued continue being very, very bold man. He exchanged the machete to the, the Bible, and he evangelizes, and glorifies, and everybody glorifies with him. <laughs> Sometimes we are worried and think, hey, a relative departed. What happened to him or to her, a brother and sister? To answer this, there is no, to this question, there is no, I don't have an answer, but I want to say the following, that God will surprise us. There are a lot of people that departed. 
that at the last moment when they were departing and they thought that there was no solution for them, they probably did like that individual saying, Lord, remember me. And that's all we need to go to heaven, to ask for mercy of God. God, remember me. I don't deserve. I enter into this situation, this problem, this situation, but have mercy on me. And I'm going to meet a lot of people that was evil here. <laughs> but they are in heaven. Because they remember those words. They remember this moment. That God is love. God is mercy. When my mother departed, the Lord has shown to me for a year that was she was going to depart. The day in which she departed, I asked, Lord, give me a word. So I opened up the Bible, and the Lord said, and I saw his, her face like the face of an angel. And the moment in which Stephen was departing. So we're going to see uh, many of our relatives, our beloved ones there, because the Bible says that every word that we sow If you speak with your relative to a co-worker, maybe they didn't accept. They may not have agreed with you. They may think that you're crazy, but at a determined point in their lives, they will remember what you told them. And then it will resort, result in salvation for their lives. Amen. Now that you're not going to sing a song, Now play the song that we're, you were going to play a while ago.
Lord to God. The church will stand up. Lord Father, we adore you and praise you. We're thankful because you have given us from heaven and that you're going to take us to your eternity. We praise you. You're thankful for this because, Lord, in spite of our weaknesses and our failures, your, our imperfections, you have guaranteed us that we'll be in your eternity. We adore you because the manifestation of your love upon our lives, of our homes, of our family members, take us home in peace so that we can do our own tasks, be with us throughout this day and prepare us for once again to be with you in this place at night to praise you and adore your name and glorify your name. Give a blessing to each child, intermediary, adolescent in their homes and family members and your daughters, Lord, that have um, taught the, um, your, to them your teaching and the remaining things that you may complete in the life of each one of your children. Take us home in peace, we pray in the holy name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our, our good and eternal Father, and sweet and eternal consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people of the God now and forevermore. Amen. Oh, the service is over. To everyone, the peace of the Lord. I'd like to remind the brethren that 6.15 we have... Uh, we have uh, a meeting with the adolescents and the youth.